Hey guys, today we have the Railcraft tutorial, and this go we're going to cover a lot of content on this video. Right, so Railcraft adds all kinds of different things to the minecart systems, uh, all kinds of different tracks, and a bit of new blocks. So the first thing you're going to want to make is a coke oven. We're going to show the recipe now. Right, so to make a coke oven, you need to make coke oven brick, and this is the recipe here. You're going to need to make 26 of this to make one coke oven and you just want to make a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube leaving the middle block with nothing so just empty so as soon as you put together you'll see that the coke oven will be finished and it'll just appear here okay. when you right click it on the left side you can put in coal and it's very very slow but on the right side it'll output creosote oil as well as coal coke Coal coke um, is fuel for railcraft, and if you put in a generator from industrial craft, it will produce twice uh, the power from. Right, so this is a crowbar. It's sort of the main tool for use with in um, railcraft here. So there's a lot of rails, and we're going to go over them pretty quick. So, but before we do that, we're going to be making something called a rolling uh, machine. Machine. So right. the rolling machine is basically a um, crafting table for railcraft. Right, so it doesn't actually work as a normal crafting table. Some recipes are made in the crafting table, some are made in the rolling machine. So that's something good to, to be aware of. Uh, the first kind of rails we're going to be making are wooden rails. And to make that, you're going to need to make wooden slabs and put creosote oil on top to make wooden ties. So with wooden ties, you can make the wooden rail bed, which you use to make the wooden... Um, rails. Something good to point out is that this is a shapeless recipe. So here I'm just putting it anywhere in the crafting table. It just requires four wooden ties. Um, wooden rails are basically the slowest and the most basic rails. They're pretty cheap to make and that's the recipe. And they aren't very good either. So here we're just making some more wooden ties. Yeah, so you're going to need quite a lot of these. So for switch rails, generally the type of rail tie, as well as the rail bed, is just in this same recipe. So for iron rails and different things later, it'll be the same recipe, you'll see. And that right there is the wooden junction rail. So we're going to show all of the uses for these in a sec. Uh, this is a standard rail. And this is made in the rolling machine, not the crafting table. Right, so the standard rail works a lot like a wooden tie. And you don't need to make a different kind of rail bed. You just use the standard wooden one. And this is to make the, the normal rails. Right, so the recipe for the regular old rails has changed to this one. Uh, because, you know, it needs to balance it out. It needs to make it a little bit more fair. Yeah, so these ones will go a bit faster than wooden, and they have more functions. So as you can see here, the junction rail is made the same way, but with the iron rails. And same for the switch rail. Right, so iron rails are where it starts to get a little bit more interesting. You can have all kinds of different ones. First, we're going to make some gold plate rails to make them different kinds of rails. So to make a gold plate rail, uh, you need to set it up in the recipe we show here. Uh, the first time we messed it up, uh, here it is, gold plate rail. You need the iron rails on the left and gold ingots on the right. And again, that's done in the rolling machine, not the crafting table. Right, so what we're going to make is some regular uh, powered rails. So power rails just um, speed up the, the minecart for a certain distance before you have to speed it up again. And these work the same way as the regular powered rails in the vanilla version. That's the recipe right there on screen. Right, so this is a detector rail. It works pretty much the same way as any detector rail in the regular game, but it's made with a different recipe. Yeah, so right here is the elevator rail, and this will go um, vertically, so my cards will go up and down. So what we'll show you in a bit is a really great way to use elevator rails to make elevators for your mine shafts. Yeah. <laughs> Right. 
Right, so this next one is a control rail. A control rail works normally like a booster rail, but it doesn't need to be powered, and it, slow, it speeds you up or slows you down. And does it gradually, not as intense as the booster rail. So it constantly speeds up in one direction, and that direction can be changed by the crowbar with a right click. So this one here is a one-way rail, which will basically stop you from going in the opposite uh, direction. So you can go one way over it, and you can't come the way back. Now that way, that direction, can be changed again with a right click with the crowbar. You will see all the uses for these set up later. So this one here is the holding rail, and it will stop the minecart, and um, if you hit a button or a redstone signal, it will send you in the same direction with the same momentum. So if you're going fast, it would keep you fast, and it would... And this one here is the boarding rail, and you just use it to board the minecart. So it has one direction, uh, just like many of the other ones, and that can be set with the crowbar. This one here is the launcher rail, which would basically shoot the minecart into the air. You can set the amount that uh, the cart is launched by right-clicking with the crowbar, and you can change it depending on the amount of power that you send it. And here is the recipe for it. This one here is a primer rail. So priming rail, uh, which we'll show you in a bit, it, it primes TNT for it to explode. So normally when you set a redstone signal or set a TNT on fire, it'll, it'll start glowing and that's the priming. So that's what that does. So this one's here is just um, suspended, suspended rails. rails yeah. So this will only go two blocks um, without needing support underneath. So you can make little bridges, but they can't be very large, uh, because if they go farther than two blocks without support, then they won't work. Yeah. So this next one here is a disembarking rail. And this one will basically just get you automatically, automatically up the minecart once you go through it. So if you go over it and it's powered, you'll be immediately launched out of your minecart. Okay. So I guess it saves you, saves you a couple of seconds from right-clicking the minecart. So what we're making here is a fence rail. And this one will basically is a rail with a fence on it. And if you put a detector rail, it will um, trigger the fence on and off so you can go through it. So this is a great way to store minecarts, and if you put them under pressure, they will all leave the fence when you power the fence. Right, so we're going to move on to high-speed rails. So you need to make stone slabs to make um, st uh, stone uh, ties. So that right there is a stone tie, and it's made using a rebar. So a rebar is just three iron diagonally in the crafting table. Yeah, I wouldn't show the recipe, but it's pretty simple. So four stone ties in a square makes a stone rail bed. Again, chip list recipe. You can just place it all around if you want. So what we're going to make here is laminate rail. Now this is the recipe for it, and it's the rails for high speed. And this is done in the rolling machine, not the crafting table. And here, for the regular um, high speed rails, you just place the stone um, bed with the uh, laminate rails. And it'll make 40 high speed rails. Yeah, that's quite a lot. Uh, we only recommend using high speed for long distances because you do need um, to slow them down every once in a while. So this is a high speed booster rail. When powered, it'll boost in any direction. Yeah, it'll 
boost you up to high speed. Uh, So the next one we're going to make is a high speed switch rail. Uh, we actually found that the high speed switch rail doesn't really work that well because when you switch at high speeds, it actually destroys your minecart. Yeah, it'll blow up because you're going too fast to turn. So. so this next one is a high speed transition rail. Uh, what this is good for is it has one direction that it points in and that can be changed again with the crowbar. And what that'll let you do is either speed up or slow down your minecart, depending on the direction it's going in. So now we're going to make um, a circuit. So this is a really complicated recipe with all kinds of different things in it. Uh, and this is, this is to make the chip that actually goes in the uh, motor switch. So the, mo uh, the switch motor will just power the, the switch rails. Right, so a switch, a switch motor goes on the side of any switch rail and when you power it with redstone it'll switch the track. So pretty useful for having um, several distances. So what we just made is here is a TNT card and that's just one TNT over top of a regular mine card. And we're going to be using that with the priming and launching rails. Right, so this is a very basic um, setup. And that's just a boarding rail underneath with a minecart on top and a button. So when you click the button, it powers the boarding rail beneath. And it sends them in the direction that the boarding rail has changed. Yep, and those are just wooden rails, so they will go pretty slow. Right, so I'm just showing you here that you can change the direction of the boarding rail. And there it is there. The good thing about the boarding rail is that you don't need a block behind the beginning of the rail cart, so that you you don't have you don't need to do it like in regular minecart minecraft. So this is just a wooden booster rail. And it does boost the on the wooden track, but it doesn't boost it very far. Yeah. And it needs to be powered by um, a redstone signal. The last that one that was there was a junction rail, so it just allows you to go through it in different directions. So that one there is a primary rail, and you can choose the fuse for how long the TNT will last before exploding. The next one is a launcher rail, so hopefully what we're going to do is prime it and then launch it. Yeah, the launcher rail can throw a max distance of 30. Into the Jackson 5. So there's another boarding rail again, and we're just going to put our TNT cart down and send it going. So by switching the lever we can switch the the signal that's um, transferring the switch rail. Right, so this is much better than right clicking the actual switch rail because right clicking it will send the default path. So that's why you use a switch motor. Yep. And there goes the TNT card launched by the launcher rail. Right, so now we're just going to use the switch motor, and we're going to change the direction of the path. So just by right, um, by sending the signal, we'll uh, transfer the path. So these are just regular iron booster rails, and these here are our suspended rails. So they will only go to, if you try doing it three, they'll just break down. And to place them, you just have to put a block down and put those over top of block. And then you can just get rid of the block afterwards. So it's useful for going some over some gaps or just a lava lake or whatnot. So there was the disembarking rail. When it's powered, if you go over it when you're in a minecart, it'll just pull you out. So this is the gated rail, and on either side of it, I have detector rails. So when the minecart goes over the detector rails, it'll power the gate, and then it'll go through the gate and open the detector rail again. This one here is the holding rail, which will basically stop you and will let you go once uh, a signal has been sent through. And this one here is the one-way rail, which will basically let you go in only one way. 
right? So that one direction can be set with the crowbar once again. And we're going to test this out. Now, you might be wondering why on the first pass, the minecart won't stop at the holding rail. And that's because the <coughs> detector rail will actually send the signal through. So what we discovered was that the detector rail would actually... There you go. So now it stopped because there's no detector rail on the other side. So because the detector rail powers the holding rail, it doesn't actually hold it. And the holding rail will keep the same momentum, so if you were going really fast, once you start again, it will go really fast again. And the last thing in the line there is the one-way rail, and it just bounces in back. The one-way rail will take a lot of your momentum out. So these are the control rails, and as you can see here, they have a direction, they're pointing to the left. So this one will basically um, gradually slow it up, or slow it down. So depending on the direction you're going, uh, it may slow you down or speed you up. So what we're going to show here is a regular Minecraft with a person in it going over. Yeah, because of um, my weight added to the minecart, it didn't stop because of the inertia. But once it's empty, it will, uh, will go back. So it didn't slow him down quite enough because there was much more momentum to the cart. But if you see you do the same thing with an empty cart, it should make it go. As you can see, it just speeds it up gradually. And then when we bring it back, it should slow it down once, once it's, it's on its own. Yeah. So here you see, it actually slows it down to the point of changing directions. So we're going to test it with the boarding rail. So even after being powered three times, and being launched by the launcher rail, it still eventually changes direction and comes back. Right, so the last thing we're going to show you is the high speed rails. So this also basically go at even higher speeds, so for fa really fast transporting. And they will go up to two and a half times the speed of a regular uh, rail. You can see uh, change the direction of these with the um, crowbar. So those were the high speed transition rails, and this is a regular high speed booster rail. And the ones on the sides are just um, regular high speed rails. So the reason that blew up is because one of the transition rails was pointing in the wrong direction. Also, if you stand in the middle of the track, it will also blow up. And we'll show you that in a second. Now, the reason he didn't go speeding into the edge there is because the transition rails have a direction, and that's the difference between them and the booster rail. Yeah. Here, we're going straight from high-speed rails into um, regular rails, and that will blow up because the speed is too much to handle. So that's why you want to use the transition rails pointed in the opposite direction, so that you can slow it down to regular minecart speed, mine speeds, uh, before sending it off. And if you stand in the, in the middle of the rail, it will blow up as well. So here's a little contraction we made with elevator rails. And you just basically get in the minecart and press the button, and it will go up. Here's a holding rail, and you stop here, and when you press the button again, you'll go. So here could be a floor for a building or whatever you want to. And uh, when you press a button again, it goes at the same momentum it had before, up the elevator once again. And the last one will go over a launching rail. So the launching rail works the same, it will shoot you in the air. And there it blew up because it went from high speed to uh, regular speed rails. So thanks very much, comment, rate, subscribe. We'll have more videos for you guys soon. And we'll see you later.